this is Pipe Organs of South Carolina, and I'm David Kaiser. I'm standing outside the Episcopal Church of the Advent in downtown Spartanburg, South Carolina, and I have a spec sheet. Inside is a flintlock pipe organ built in 1989. It has about 29 ranks, and it's a mechanical stop action. We love those. See you inside in a bit. Right now, we are at the Episcopal Church of the Advent in Spartanburg. We are in the church's rear gallery, and I am seated at the church's organ, which was built by the Flintrop Pipe Organ Company of Zandam, Netherlands, in 1988. This organ has served the church really well for over 25 years, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the organ and play some music which uh, shows off its best qualities. Okay, great. Can you do an overview of the, of the stops on this organ? Sure. This organ is unique in town. It has an action that's called mechanical action. It's not just mechanical key action, but mechanical stop action. It has mechanical key action because the performer has direct control over the keys of the organ. If I were to pull out one of these knobs, which are called stops, you get all sorts of different sounds. And if I were to play a note, like let's say middle C, I would be pushing down a note, which would be connected to a lever that would let air into a pipe. All the pipes of this organ sit on something called a wind chest. And when a pallet is open to let air in a pipe, the pipe causes a sound. This organ, has a whole bunch of stops, and not surprisingly, the more stops you pull out, the more sound you get. The fewer stops you have out, the less sound you get. This kind of action is the first kind of known action for uh, pipe organs, and so you don't have any kind of presets. In other words, some um, thumb pistons or toe studs like you do on modern organs. You have to use only your hands, and to a certain extent, your feet to control the stops. And A, it's a little bit less expensive to do that way, but B, it's also what uh, famous uh, organists like Johann Sebastian Bach knew over time. And so this organ was in some ways made to look and sound like organs that Bach might have played. There are four different families of organ tone. The first one is principles. Principle is the basic kind of sound of the organ, and it can't be imitated by any other instrument. It sounds like this. And it also has a higher component. Even higher than that. And if you have all three stops together, you get this sound. The pipes for the press stunt can be found in the front of the organ, in other words, the facade. So if I were to play low C of the eight foot press stunt, the eight means that the longest pipe is eight feet long. And so if you were to take a look at the longest pipe at the top of the case, this is the sound that would be coming out of it. Other families of organ tone, you have principles and you also have flutes. Flutes sound just like flutes, in other words, uh, flutes that you might hear in a band or an orchestra. And they're really sweet sounds that are really good for playing soft stuff, like if you want to accompany a singer, or if you have a kind of a quiet moment during a church service. Flutes can be middle pitch. Or they can be high.
or they can be low. There are also string stops. This is the gamba up here. And the gamba is the ancestor of a more modern string instruments like the violin or the cello. And this is the sound that comes from the gamba. my favorite family of all, the reeds. Reeds really imitate a whole bunch of stops that you might find in the brass or even the woodwind section of the orchestra. On this organ we have a hobo, which is Dutch for oboe. It is a beautiful stop for sure. So apologies to Cesar Franck for kind of butchering a piece that he wrote, but you get the idea. <laughs> and we have a bigger reed here called a trompette, that's Dutch for trumpet. Or how about sending the pedal? I haven't talked about the pedal just yet, but on an organ, not only can you play with your hands, you can play using your feet. And I can play a melody with my feet on a stop called the fahot. Fahot is Dutch for bassoon. And then really low. Here's the lowest note you can hear in this organ. You don't usually hear that sound by itself. Now, do you want to play through a few pieces for us? Sure, I'd be happy to play through a few pieces. Here's one by Johann Sebastian Bach, there which you. uses only the manuals, in other words, the keyboards. Organs usually have two manuals, which is another word for keyboards. A lot of organs have three manuals. Some have four or five. And the world's largest organs have six or seven, but this is definitely a much smaller instrument, but definitely very good for accompanying uh, congregational singing and playing a good bit of repertoire. This is a setting of Come Now, Savior of the Heathen, which was a popular hymn back in a Johann Sebastian Bach's time. This church is called the Church of the Advent, so it seems appropriate that I should play a piece of music appropriate for the season of Advent. I was using only one stop. I was using the Quintadena at eight foot pitch on the swell. Here's a piece by Danny Bedard called Diptyque. A diptyque is a composition with two movements. This piece was written for the 25th anniversary of this church's organ, and we had a 25th anniversary concert back in 2013. The first movement is an arietta, and it features the hobo stop, accompanied by the eight-foot hold peep, which is in the flute family, and then I have something complimentary in the pebble. This piece lasts a minute and 45 seconds.
and the board game. It does. Danny asked me about the kind of organ on which I'd be playing the piece, and I told him it was a flintrop, and so he said to me, well, I better make sure that I keep the registration changes to a minimum, and I thought that he did a really good job writing for this organ. Here's its companion piece, which is a marchetta. You can hear the theme from the first movement in the second movement as well. A lot more stops, so that means a lot more sound. This organ, I think, was really, really well built. There isn't a single sound of this organ that I think of as ugly, quote unquote. I would say that everything was beautifully and lovingly voiced, and that has a lot to do with the fact that Flentrop has been around for centuries, uh, building a, the most beautiful of instruments that you can find. So, yeah, I'm really uh, happy that uh, this instrument turned out as well as it did, yeah. that it served uh, this church for so long so well. Great. Um, do you mind if I play? No, go right ahead. Uh, you got something else you would like to play for us? Maybe I can play a Bach prelude, and there's time I may play the fugue as well. Good. But this is his prelude in G major, and if there's time, I'll go into the fugue. Sure. Is this the, the G fugue? No. This is not a standalone piece. This is one with a prelude and a companion fugue. The Bach Werkenfett Zeichnis number is 541. So let's see how I do with this one. Do you want me to turn pages for you? Yes, that'd be great.
you. Thank you so much for playing yes. so much for us. Well, my pleasure. I enjoy uh, playing this organ. And uh, what a nice pedal sound. It's a great mm -hmm. pedal sound for sure. This pedal board, by the way, is not typical of most organs. And the reason mm -hmm. why is because it has pedals uh, going straight out. Uh, this is what's called a flat pedal board. And this would have been the kind of pedal board that Johann Sebastian Bach would have known. Most organs have what's known as a radiating pedal board, where the lowest pedal comes in like this and the top pedal comes in like that. And radiating pedal boards have 32 notes. This one has 30. Hmm. And so it doesn't quite have as many notes as a typical pedal board, nor does it have as many manuals as a typical organ. Does this still match the AGO standard pedal board? Not at all. Okay. Yeah. So yes, you know about the AGO standard pedal board. This is not an AGO standard pedal board so it's at all. Mi missing F sharp and G. It is missing F sharp and G. Okay. Um, one thing about this organ is that it's really unforgiving, and unforgiving isn't a bad thing. Unforgiving in the sense that it shows off your mistakes better than any other organ in town. Good for you, David. You have your organ so, shoes so with you. So we're about to witness that right now. Exactly. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. Just kidding. Uh, so, have, did you have to change your organ pedaling technique at all with this? Um, non-radiating pedal board? Um, maybe a little bit. I would say that I rely more on toe technique on this organ than I would with a radiating pedal board. Um, just because there's some schools of thought which say that when you play music of Bach or anybody before Bach, you just use all toes. Helps you to get a good, clean, non-legato sound, but by the time you get to the 19th century, heels had pretty much become the standard. I use heels when I play Bach, and uh, I don't get my students to use all toes when they play Bach. Uh, I'm gonna, can I play a little bit of Bach? I'm going to try. Little yeah, little go organ, for it. You, in G minor. All right, so um, what stops would you recommend for this piece? Let's see. Um, would you like uh, soft gap registration? Would you like uh, more full registration? Probably fuller. Oh, good. I can give you that. I'm going to scooch forward a little bit here. Absolutely. That's pretty much the same registration that I used when I played the G major just a little bit ago. Okay, so, so which one is... Is this for? That's for the swell. Swell. And these are all for the grade, and this is for the pedal. Oh, okay. So the pedal is hidden over here. You mm -hmm. gotta make some effort. Okay, let's see. <laughs>
<laughs> it is hard to play, that's for sure. But it's very scary. Yeah. Oh man, I, how, I'm so impressed by how you can play this pedal board so well. Well, thank I, you. You did very well yourself uh, for not having ever played a flat pedal before. And I, I was, I was a little scared. Like, is it lower that way? Is it it like, is a little bit lower that way. I mean, the fact that it doesn't radiate and follow the natural angle of your feet is what makes it so much harder. Because does it go like this? Is that I'm normally feeling... a pedal board goes like this, but this one goes like that. I mean, I feel like the keys are actually lower to the ground. Like this C is lower than this D. It may be if the simple reason that it's flat, and it probably feels a little bit lower at the top angle too. Like it kind of uh, slopes like that. Yeah, it has a slope to it. So when I was reaching down to get that C, I had a little heart attack. <laughs> I understand. Well, well thanks for it, letting me play it. Oh, you're welcome. Right? Thank you for playing it so well. You know, David, for having been self-taught, you're doing an extraordinary job. Thanks. Uh, this is a nice key, so. It is. I had a one student who worked on this for a long time. Not on the key. It's a skeleton key. You feel like a crypt keeper when you play this organ. That's great. <laughs> so inside you see the reservoir, which feeds air to the bellows that feed air to the pipes. Uh -huh. And you can see all the stop knobs right there. Hey, Tony, do you have a flashlight on your phone? Um, I feel like there's a light switch somewhere inside of here. In fact, I know there is a light switch. Let's get some of that tracker action going on. Oh, yeah. You can Wait, see all the trackers and all the stop knobs. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah. I love it. And this is the oldest me, way of building an organ. Can I get in a little bit more? Give me your phone, Tony. I'll hold, I'll hold both of them. Okay. Watch out. Yeah, that's so, so awesome. You can't quite see how far back it is via camera, but Let's see. Quite the engineer. Going up the stairs. I'm getting this on live live television. Nice. All right. So I'm going to demonstrate both sides of this walkway. To my left, you have all the pipes of the Great Division. And I can give you an approximate idea of which pipes are which. These pipes right here that are conically shaped are for the eight foot trumpet rank. Smaller the pipe, obviously, the higher the pitch. Some of these pipes right here with uh, caps on the top are for flute pipes. And these are some principal pipes right here. This right here, the eight foot board, the 16 foot board on it has a really low, dull sound. And the bottom pipes for this particular stop right here are made of wood. And I think it's because wood gives you a little bit more fundamental pitch than metal does. Hmm. So you can probably see a few of those um, wooden pipes right there, David. Yeah. Oh, wait. Yes, maybe. Possibly. Maybe. Yes, Let maybe. me come up with another step. Sure. Go ahead and come into the chamber if you like. Okay. And if I were to blow into Just the bottom of a pipe, it would make that able, pitch. It would make a sound. So let's say that I were to take out one of the reed pipes right here. If I were to take out this pipe, Tony, come. It's better. You can see the tracker action better. It's pretty cool. This is the sound it would make. And that is a fine-sounding trumpet. That is a fine-sounding cool. trumpet indeed. So are these to the pedal right here? Oh no, pedal is behind you. Pedal's all so behind you. So what is this This one going to the top there? Those trackers are going up to the swell division. There's some more pipes oh, up okay. here through this trap door. The swell division? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's like a fortress. I feel yes. like if more kids knew what the inside of a pipe organ looked like, they would want to play it. I think they would, that's true. And I invite you all to consider taking uh, Sunday school kids up into the pipe chamber. They would fire us for that. Aww! Which are for the 16 foot for hot, and right next to it you have the pipes for the 4 foot choral bass. And right next to it you have pipes for the 8 foot flout. And you can see that they're open with some metal flaps on the top to help with tuning. And, the tuning. Oh, and nice. then you have some pipes with stoppers at the back. And those are for the 16-foot bourdon. The stopper, by the way, lowers the pitch of the pipe by an octave. Hmm. And so if you have a, something which says bourdon 16, the longest pipe is not 16 feet long. It's actually 8 feet long. So it's an economical way to get 16-foot tone in an organ. So if you wanted to play a joke on an organist, you would take out all of those stoppers? You could. <laughs> in fact, when I was in grad school, I thought, gee, wouldn't it be nice to take all the stoppers off?